everybody. I'm Peggy. I'm Laura. And we are Urban, Urban Booze. Booze. And we have a special guest today that we are very happy to have. We have Chris Chester, the founder of Aka Soul. I know I'm pronouncing okay. it wrong, so, so you correct me, correct me, because it's, there's a story behind why okay. I messed it up, but go on. Tell us the correct so name. The correct name is Aka Effervescent Nectars. Okay. This uh this first ideation is called Aka Sorel. Sorel. Yes. Okay. So Sorel. So we say Yankee. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a the first ideation in a line of effervescent nectars. Okay. Aka's effervescent nectars. So mm -hmm. um effervescent nectars are an exotic expression of flavors in a sparkling space right um to me i, I always effervescent nectar to me is, it's a new category now that we're kind of coined in mm -hmm. sparkling wine segment so we're not trying to reinvent the wheel mm -hmm. um we just just like there you have cavas you have champagnes mm -hmm. you have yeah. uh, proseccos effervescent nectar is a new lane in sparkling wines okay it's an exotic premium uh line of of, of flavors that's never been done before in sparkling wine Okay. So we're playing around with the uh, uh, notes of uh, different floral notes, uh, spices, things yeah. that are mm -hmm. quite interesting and, and niche, very niche in the sparkling wine space. Okay. Okay. I didn't answer my first question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, but, but why why was sorrow first? Why not Another anything flavor. else? Why sorrow first? Um, Sorrel, I'm sorry. Right. Sorrel, see? Okay, she's American too. So, you know, we got to so work out for nothing. Sorrel uh, is something close and dear to me from my roots. I'm Guyanese. Mm -hmm. um, and it was something that was introduced uh, mostly during the holidays. Okay. Right? Yes. Uh, though it can be year round. So it would be likened to that of maybe like a, like a lemonade. Or iced tea. Really? That's how you kind of. That's how, how you kind of curate it. And those mm -hmm. who are, who are like old school, who used to really make really brewed iced tea. Mm -hmm. uh, the hibiscus leaf mm -hmm. is where we get sorrow from. Okay. And it's kind of prepared the same way. You kind of you you, you boil and mm -hmm. then you kind of stew it down. All these beautiful properties come out. This beautiful burgundy comes out. Mm -hmm. um, this aroma, this this aroma that kind of is really kind of captivating, and, and then uh, traditionally in the islands, what they do, they add like little spices to kind of right. to elevate mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. enhance the taste profile, and you add sugar, you sweeten the taste, and mm -hmm. and thus voila. So when I decided to embark on Aka, uh, I was sitting down in a communication meeting uh, with uh, Moen and Hennessy at the time. Because mm -hmm. uh, we want to advertising and uh, marketing and sales force for we're a dedicated marketing advertising and sales force for more than Hennessy and Diageo brands, their mm -hmm. portfolio. And I'm just sitting down and listening. I'm like, these people still don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> they still don't get it. Uh, it seemed a little, a little disrespectful in regard in, in respect to that our market. Is a very integral market mm -hmm. for their bottom line, mm -hmm. and I would hope that your marketing skills would, would reflect that, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Right? They did it. Uh, they try to use this kind of uh, this this new or it became a new terminology when I was in the industry. Uh, this urbane approach. <sighs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. It's a, you know, it's, it's more inclusive, right? This urbane notion. Uh, but it's a broad stroke. But it's a broad stroke. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it is a broad stroke, to your point. Um, so I said, I want to, I, I, I want to, I said to myself, I looked at a friend of mine standing right next to me. I'm like, I could do this. Like, <laughs> why, don't we, why don't we try to do something? I don't, I, so um, I knew that I wanted to, to partake, I wanted to be in the sparkling wine space. And, you know, mm -hmm. um, being an alcohol, the alcohol, the wine and spirits industry for over twenty years now, I've seen. I've been in the beer. I've done beer. We've done wines, uh, vodkas, cognacs, tequilas, uh, mm -hmm. scotch, mm -hmm. the whole gamut. Mm -hmm. um, we've watched um, brands like Nouveau come in, and which was in 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 
in, in retrospect, it was, it was innovation, right? It mm -hmm. was something that was yeah. totally different. Uh, uh, sparkling vodka, liqueur, you know, sparkling <laughs> vodka liqueur. And wow. because of its packaging and its, uh, and, its and, and the taste profile, it, it appealed to a lot of people. It had a, not, had a low, lower alcohol content, mm -hmm. but more so skewed towards the female demographic. Mm -hmm. um, and the guy won, right? He did a, he won. They did they had mm -hmm. a fantastic run. Now, I mean, you know, they were trying to do do some minor extensions that didn't uh, pan out that well. Mm -hmm. But he had a fantastic run. He's also the guy that was uh, uh, instrumental in being hypnotic. He was a creator, innovator. Oh, really? Oh my God! Okay. I know that one. Right. Isn't that so, a pretty color one? No, pretty, no, well, well, that's more of a. I always I always liken it to. Uh, uh, Long, Island, Long Island iced tea. Ooh, with a beautiful strong. color. Exactly. So it was yeah. a strong <laughs> mix. So he had yeah. cognac, he had vodka, mm -hmm. then he had tequila in it. There's a, 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 a gumbo of sorts, right? Mm -hmm. Of all the alcohols. And then he gave this really kind of really cool blue color that everyone was attracted to. Right. And um, his spelling, the unique and, and spelling. And then, and then, and then, and then so hypnotic, right? So the packaging. To the urbane. To the urbane right. yeah. Demographic. Yeah, yeah. Um, so back to your original question. I. I said to myself that I knew that vodka was to me was overly saturated. Mm -hmm. I'm not a great big vodka f uh, uh, fan. Um, I love brown spirits, mm -hmm. um, rum specific, uh, specifically cognac, uh, scotch. I could do them all, but rum is one of my favorites. Cognac and mm -hmm. okay. one of my my top two. But uh, and, but those all uh, industries or segments that are to me. They're Abs done. They're, yeah, they're done, and and they have like this kind of like a like a male bravado mm -hmm. uh, uh, push behind it, right? This right. is this is this has been going on from its its from its inception, and I thought sparkling wine and wine in particular was a bit more uh, open for everyone, mm -hmm. and I want I want to be in a space that's, that's inclusive of right. everyone, and especially uh, highlighting and focusing on a on a demographic I think that's been marginally. Ignored, oh, right? Okay. right? Which is the female demographic, mm -hmm. who are the ones one of the major driving forces for wines, right? Mm -hmm. right? Um, and keep it really keep it real. Like I, I love champagne, right? I okay. love champagne, <laughs> but so I said, okay, this is what I want to be. I want to be in a sparkling wine space. This is what I'm going to focus on. What do I need to do for, as a marketer? Right. What am I going to do? To differentiate myself in this sea of sparkling wines that are out there, right, right. So, um, you know, you have your carvers, you have your proseccos, as I mentioned before, your champagnes, um, uh, your petites, everything that's out there right now. What can I do that's going to make myself different? How can I stand out? So I said, you know what, we need, we need to really dig down. Mm. And then one day, and actually, it was it was kind of organic because. It was a. Uh, I was at my mother's house in Long Island uh, mm -hmm. for a Christmas dinner, and we always have a batch of sauvignon, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we always have bottles of champagne as as we're celebrating. So normally, when you have the drier tasting profiles, we normally probably mix or we make like a mimosa. Right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah, it kind of morphed into this. You know, we had sorrel there, had champagne here, mm -hmm. we put a little bit of sorrel in the champagne. Voila. And so oh. the brainchild in its simplicity. Wow. Wow. It was something that I had done for actually decades. Yeah. Now be, now actually for me to tell you, if you asked me this uh, 10, 10 years, 15 years ago, I don't know like, uh, what you're talking about. Right, right, right. Fathom, right. But in this world now that's ever changing and, mm -hmm. and as we as we now also educate ourselves in and pride ourselves in having different options. Mm -hmm. I thought it'd be a really cool option to bring something mm -hmm. new, totally, something totally new to the yeah. fray, mm -hmm. you know, and create this new line, like an effervescent nectar, right? Because it speaks to that, right? It's, it's, right. it's, it's, it, it speaks to, um, you know, uh, 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 Greek, uh, Greek uh, philosophy uh, it talks about nectar being the food of the gods. You know, okay, right? okay. So, Akka represents, it, 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 it attracts or it wants to to, uh, to bring in or release the God in you. Oh, is that what Akka means? That's what Akka means. 
Okay. Okay. Because, um, you know, one of the questions I have for you is when I went to, just to look for it, you know, I went to uh, AAA in Cambria Heights and I had showed him the name and he was like, no, we don't have it. And I said, um, it's the one made with sorrel. He goes, oh, the sorrel one. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. And I know I'm totally fine. And that's how he found it. So in terms of branding, the marketer in you, how are you educating these vendors to recognize the name? You know? I always have to reaffirmate myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because had I not said it, I would have walked out the store and, and not found it. I had gone no. to two stores, and that's when right. I realized I, when the guy finally... So, oh, oh, here it is. I didn't know it by that name. So now, <clears throat> that's been one of the struggles. So we talk about the educational component. Mm -hmm. um, and that marketing, that a &P that's needed, right? And it, it comes, it, 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 unfortunately, but fortunately, it, it, it garners a sufficient amount of money to really kind of be out there and, and convey the message, right? Mm -hmm. So I go to my the retailers and I explain to them, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But it gets lost in translation, mm -hmm. yeah. right? right? And and not only that, it's a new brand, right? And um, some people, most consumers are attracted to things that they're more familiar with, right? Yeah. Exactly. So exactly. sorrow is something that hits home for a lot of people, and then some people don't 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 even they can't fathom what sorrow is, right? right? Until they have the experience, right? Right. right? Um, so that educational component is. One of the struggles I've been dealing with mm -hmm. okay. because of lack of that. Right. We don't, we don't know sorrow. Right. There's, there's, <laughs> like, don't. there's right. no grapes in the backyard. No, there's, there's right. no sorrel right. grapes, no sorrel cranberry right. commercial. <laughs> <That's, that's laughs> no. right. right. So, so it's like, a plant, really? Right. Yeah. So, a plant. So, now that becomes interesting. So, the education component taps into okay, so what is this sorrel that you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right.